Good morning. Scripture reading this morning will be in the book of Matthew. Matthew 21, 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and those that followed shouted, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Thank you, Phil. Great to see everybody today. You guys sound good singing. It's always good to be able to hear praises to God. And I'm excited about Family Fusion coming up. That's going to be a good thing. You get to come and play. So if you haven't done that before, it's a good chance to just bring your family and you'll be together with them and do some things with them as well as with a lot of other families. It is fun, so just remember that part. Um, kind of excited about the meeting that Edison's having as well, the tutoring. Uh, that might be a great outreach for us uh, so if you're interested in that, please make sure you go see him about all of those things. Uh, I don't know what it was like when you were kids, but I stayed outside most of the time. Not because I was in trouble, but it was just easier that way and I had more fun. And then would come the call, it's dinner, come to dinner. And that one you can ignore, right? So, I mean, why would you go in just because somebody says that? About five minutes later, the call would come back. Mom said it's time for dinner. <laughs> okay. That one has authority. And when mom said it's time for dinner, then, okay, now I know I got to go because... It was just my sister, who cares, you know. We go off of people's authority. We see this, we understand this, you know. Uh, we take some people more serious than we take other people because we give them more credibility or more authority. We think they know more or something like that. When you come in the name of mom, that's one of the most powerful names that there is. Because if mom says it's in her house and you know that that's going to happen. We also tend to drop important names of important people. And so if we think they're important, maybe if we knew them, it would give us greater credibility and make us look better. And so sometimes we'll do that and just say those kind of things. As you look at the story that's just been read to us and... Uh, about Jesus and this entry. It's very uncharacteristic for Jesus to do this. He essentially stages his own parade. And so he says, I want you to go find a colt, and they find it, they bring it, and everything's set up, everything's ready. This is right at the end of his ministry, about a week before his death on the cross. And so it's time. He could have done this at any time. He could have done this at the beginning. His identity is the same but now they know his teaching. Now they know his healing. Now his credibility has been built. And now he says, okay, it's time for the world to see this. And so I think he plans this very well. As he goes in, 
He is riding on a donkey, one of the only times we see him riding. And they begin to put cloaks on the donkey on the road in front of him. This is the hero's welcome. When the conquering hero would come back from war, they would meet him outside the city and they would praise as he came in because now he has won this great war and has all these spoils and, and all these good things. They're doing that for Jesus. Here's the conquering hero as he comes into Jerusalem. And their shout is, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to God in the highest. And so they are connecting him with God. He comes in the name of the Lord. He comes with the Lord's power. He comes as the Lord's representative. Hosanna to the son of David. And what they're referring to there is not that David was his father, but that in the lineage of King David, who is a thousand years before, he is the one who's promised to sit on the throne of David. And so this is a fulfillment of a prophecy now. So Hosanna to the son of David. This is the fulfillment of prophecy. This is the Messiah we've been looking for. This is the one who comes and speaks for the Lord himself. This is the one who comes and we understand his place. This is his identity. And so as he comes into Jerusalem, there referring to him as the prophet. He's the prophet like Moses who was going to be raised up as is prophesied in the Old Testament. These are huge statements about who Jesus is, about him being the king of Israel. And this is the highest honor you could ever give to anybody. This is the guy who came from God. He speaks for God. He has God's words. And so this is really huge. He is the fulfillment of that promise. I'm not sure Jesus of Nazareth does a whole lot for him. It's like Terry of Mesa, you know, it just kind of loses something in the translation. There's no power in that. There's no authority in that. Jesus of Nazareth may have been his hometown, but son of David, the one who comes in the name of the Lord, how great and how mighty is that? He speaks for God. And he doesn't say it this time, the crowd says it. Don't you hate that when you have to, you know, give your own praise? You walk in, this is a parade, yay me, yay me. It just kind of loses something, doesn't it? But if everybody else is there, and everybody else is shouting and saying, what a great person you are, then that makes all the difference. And that's what they're doing to Jesus, saying this is the guy who really comes from God, and he comes with all the authority of God. It's like when you got somebody else's credit card, right? You got all kinds of power in that card. Why? Because somebody's name is on that, and that name, you are going in their name and going to be able to spend their money, right? That's always a great thing, isn't it? I don't have to pay for this. I'm coming in this guy's name, and I'm going to use this as the clout to be able to get whatever I want. And that's what Jesus is doing. He's coming in the name of God. And so as he comes into Jerusalem, this is a huge welcome for him. I want you to see what he does next as he comes into Jerusalem. It says, and he entered the temple, and he drove out those who sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. But the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant. Then they said to him, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes, have you never read out of the mouth of infants and nursing babes you have prepared praise? And leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany and lodged there. So when he comes in with this great hero's welcome, I mean, what do you do? Get to the door and say, all right, bye. 
No, he ends this parade, he goes all the way to the temple and he ends it at the temple and he walks into the temple and I've always disconnected these two and not quite seen how these, but maybe it makes more sense this way. If you realize this is the end of the parade when he comes in and there's all these money changers in the temple and he goes in and he comes in the name of God and starts flipping over tables in the name of God. And all these people have been saying, this is the guy coming in the name of God. And God says, my house is going to be a house of prayer, and you've made it a den of robbers. And so the blind and the lame are coming to him. As Jesus throws out, everybody else cleanses the temple, takes care of all the hypocrisy that is there, and just completely clears it so that it can be what God wants it to be. Because he has come there in the name of God and all these people realize it and the blind people come to him. And they're there to be able to understand what God's all about and to receive healing. And the children come to him. Hosanna to the son of David. And you see them giving praise to God because that's who God cares for is these little children. For the underprivileged, for those who are blind, for those who need this healing of God and certainly God is able to do that well Pharisees happen to be there. there's quite a commotion and so you see all of their interaction they're kind of indignant well this isn't right this he's not we we, we got to do something here and so it's like well don't you hear what they're doing what they're saying about you he said yeah and one of the only times you see Jesus saying and I deserve it you don't see him saying that. Well, usually he's the humble servant. He says, no, I deserve it. I am that son of God. I am the one. He says, haven't you ever read the passage? And he pulls a passage as if he's speaking for God himself because God has already spoken on this because the children are going to say what's true out of the mouth of infants and nursing babes. This is prepared praise. They are all part of this process from the beginning of this parade all the way into the clearing of the temple to the children being able to praise Hosanna to the son of David. They're welcoming their king. Don't you get it? And it seems like they were trying to stop it. They understood what he was trying to do, but they don't believe that. Jesus claims they're all part of it. That passage in Psalms 8, it applies here. It fits here. This is fulfilled now. And so you see him doing that and saying that. Jesus has scripture because he claims to come in the name of God. What else would you think he would use? Of course he's got scripture because God speaks in scripture. And so of course he's got that. And the end of it is then he leaves and goes out to Bethany and that kind of ends his coming in the name of the Lord. And in the morning he comes into Jerusalem again back to the temple. He curses the fig tree on the way in so you know he still has the power of God and he enters the temple and the first question is who gave you this authority? How did you get it? And who gave it to you? And they want to know. That's what it means to come in someone else's name. Because they understand he came in that. And they couldn't stop it. And so now they're going to question the source of it. Where did it come from? How did you get it? And of course Jesus says my authority is really from God. That's what it means to have someone's name. That's what it means to come in their name. That's what it means to have respect for God. That's what it means when his name is so important. And yet, what if we don't respect his name? The third commandment is this. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. What does that mean? Well, it means don't cuss. Okay, I'll buy that. But it means more than that. It means 
Don't take the name of God and then not live with it. Don't take the name of God and then have it be about nothing. I mean, they're saying incredible things. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He does. Hosanna to the son of David. He is. And he acts like a king as he heals those and as he blesses children and as he acts like God in the temple and is there as a representative of God. And yet, so many times as we live our life, we don't look very much like a representative of God. We look more like when we take the name of God, it's not really the best way to take the name of God. And so we end up saying something about our God, right? You shall not take of the name of the Lord your God. Not somebody else's God, not a far off distant God, not an imaginary made up God, but your God that you believe in. And if you're going to make comments about God and take the name of God, then make sure you're saying something right about the name of God. And it's more the confession of this is what the Lord would do. This is what the Lord would say. And how we give allegiance to this great God. Don't misuse the name of God so that you're robbing him of his credibility and of his power. You're really undermining God in your life, and, and it just doesn't make sense. So if you say, God damn, there better be somebody who's damned right there in front of you, right? Because that's what you meant. If we're going to use that phrase, then somebody around you is damned because you just called God to do it. Or, no, I didn't really mean that. What? You didn't mean that? So if that's not what you meant, if you damn somebody, that's kind of serious. Did you mean you were damning them? I saw this. If you must curse, use your own name. <laughs> At least that's better, right? Don't call God to do that for you. Because then we have to explain, well, no, I didn't really mean it. So every time you use the name of God, you don't really mean it? Every time we come in his name, it means nothing. Every time we speak our, for our God, it means nothing. Every time our God would say, we don't expect anyone to follow us, not even us. Because we've robbed God of his power in our life. By just our language and by the way that we say, we don't come in his name, we go out and we completely misuse it so that it destroys any of our work and anything that God would ever have a chance of doing. Would you take your own name in vain? I, I'm not really sure that we would. We don't tend to do that, do we? We call ourselves Christians sometimes but don't want to act that way. Our name becomes our identity. It's who we are. And if somebody wants to give you a compliment, they're going to say nice things about you and that name. And people are going to recognize, oh, that's the guy who. And you remember the compliment. You remember what all the people have said about you. And remember all these good things. And so it builds a reputation of who you are and the way that people feel about you. And the way that it does the same thing with God. And if we go around saying God does all of these horrible things and God does, and we completely use the name of God and say, no, it doesn't matter. His name is unimportant and act as if our na his name is unimportant in our life or make fun of him in our life or say, I don't really mean anything about God that I say. How is that powerful? How is that even allowing God to be able to bless See, we don't name our kids idiot. I had two sons, idiot and stupid, right? <laughs> no. Why wouldn't we do that? I was voting for Balthazar, but Nancy said no. <laughs> Jehoshaphat was the backup. I thought we could call him fat for short. <laughs> you know, I thought that would be cool. <laughs> There's my fat kid. <laughs> she wouldn't go for that one either, but... So we ended up with Joel and Lee. Your name is personal, isn't it? 
You don't want someone to misuse it. You want somebody to say good things. You want them to build your reputation. And when we come acting in the name of God, make sure you're acting in the name of God. Because there's a lot at stake with this. This is huge. Jesus, toward the end, this is a week after those comments in the upper room. In John 14 and verses 12 to 14, he says, Truly I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Wow. Wow. That's a credit card, isn't it? Absolutely. We're going to have fun. No. Because you're going to respect the guy whose name is on the card. You're going to say, all right, and everything I ask is going to be with this intent in mind that it is in the name of God. It is in the name that Jesus comes to portray. It is coming in his presence for what he wants to do and the way in which he wants to do it. John 15, same setting, verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you because he knows you come in the name of the Lord. Chapter 16, man, three times He's always emphasizing this. In that day you will ask nothing. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask in the name, in the name, in the Father, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be made full. Wow. All of that to someone who respects him absolutely. You would give that to your own child, wouldn't you? If you knew he respected you, if you knew that he knew your wishes, if you knew that he's always going to have your best interest at heart, if you knew he's always there to act as your representative, this is who my family is, this is what we do, and he comes back home and he says, Dad, I had to use the credit card today. You know it's fine because he needed to. Because it was something that you would have done if you were there. Because you trust him. Jesus is saying God is going to trust people who come in his name. Use it that way. Do it that way. How incredible is this? To realize the power of God. And Jesus says over and over and over again. You have this. When you respect God, when you use his name correctly, when you come in his name. We can't cuss about God and expect him to answer prayer. It's just not going to happen. I mean, you realize you just nullified every prayer that you were going to ask. Because after all, if you're not going to use his name right, then it's not going to go well. He answers to the power of his name. And everything you ask, every prayer that comes in the name of Jesus Almighty, the Father will answer. That's incredible. So don't take the name of the Lord in vain. I mean, it's to your own benefit. Because you want God to give, you want blessings to be done. And if you do that, it's, it's just showing God, I can't trust you, give me that card back. I want everything that we speak to be in God's name. So when we ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus, he says, oh yeah, you mean that, don't you? It's not like a slang expression of saying, God, do something. You meant, God, forgive me, and I will do that. Because that's how we live, because that's how we say. And when we repent and ask God to forgive, we see it come true. You can see it in Acts 2 as they talk about this whole concept of baptizing. He says, 
Repent, each one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Right? And whatever you ask in my name, it's for the forgiveness of your sin. At the end, in the Great Commission, he's going to say, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have such power. We are buried with Christ so that sins can be taken away, so that we are able to live this powerful life. Don't let that be in vain. Don't let that slip away as if it means nothing to you. Speak the name of God this week. And maybe it's time to confess Jesus today. Maybe it's time to pray or to, because your life doesn't reflect or maybe it's just time to be baptized into Christ so that you can be baptized in the, that name and you're going to live in that name and God can trust you with his promises and you're going to go out and you're going to speak in his name and the world is going to be amazed at one who comes in the name of the Lord. You may not be a parade, but it's definitely going to be a time of glory. How incredible it is when God blesses his people. Today, if we're able to help you with that, able to answer any questions, able to pray with you, would you come while we stand?